Hello, dear team. So here's my presentation about the module two bonus assignment. I have chosen an article by Ceritelli et al of 2015. It's about osteopathy since it's my field. So the title is Clinical Effectiveness of Osteopathic Treatment in Chronic Migraine and it is a three-armed randomized controlled trial. So let's start looking shortly at the research question in order to know what we're speaking about. So the population was adults with with chronic migraine lasting 15 or more days per month for more than three months in the absence of medication overuse, then the intervention was the osteopathic manipulative treatment, abbreviated OMT, as you can see, plus the medication therapy. And for the control, we have two controls, sham plus the medication therapy and medication therapy only. For the primary outcome, we have the changes from the baseline of the HIT6 score, HIT6 IT6 score stands for headache impact test and last but not least time 24 weeks. Now let's focus on the primary outcome, the HIT6 score, which was assessed at baseline and at T1. In fact, it was administered at these two times and uh, they used two scores in order to test the difference between groups. The first one was the overall HIT6 score, while the second one was the difference between the two times, so between T1 and T0. This second test was used to compare the results with the minimum important difference index. They decided to follow the article by Koito and others where they said that the minimal important difference has to be of minus 2.3 points between baseline and the post treatment of HIT6 score in order to say that a given procedure has relevant effects. So here's the HIT6 score. It has six questions uh, and the answers all have the same format. They go from never to rarely, sometimes very often and always. So it looks like an ordinal scale. But now let's move to the description of our secondary outcomes. They were all taken from the migraine diary, which was given at the beginning of the study. And this diary contained the days per month with migraine, the severity of pain assessed with the four-point Likert scale, so you can see it here in grey. It was zero no pain, one mild to moderate three severe. The amount of rescue medication and functional disability, it was assessed more or less as uh, the previous one, so zero normality, one mildly impaired, two moderately impaired, and three severely impaired. And last but not least, the adverse effects of OMT. Looking at the descriptive statistics, uh, we have two tables about the baseline characteristics. Here you can see the first one. The variables are age, BMI, and gender. Age uh, and BMI were considered continuous variables. In fact, the measure of central tendency is mean and the measure of dispersion is standard deviation. The authors didn't say if the data were normally distributed or not, so probably they were, <laughs> otherwise they should have used the median and uh, interquartile range, since we know that mean and standard deviation are highly affected by outliers. Actually, considering the quite big sample size, 105 patients, uh, probably the data were not so skewed if they were, and so this is why they used uh, the mean and the standard deviation. On the other hand, for the gender, here we see male, they decided to use proportion and it's a good choice since the variable is binary, so categorical. Then here we have the baseline characteristics of the outcome variables. The first one is our primary outcome, the HIT6. They decided to use it as a continuous variable. In fact, we see that they use mean and standard deviation. But actually, as we could see before, the HIT6 looks more like an ordinal variable rather than a continuous one. Then the other outcomes are the patients taking medications. This is categorical. In fact, they use proportion. The days of migraine per month, continuous. Then again, mean and standard deviation and the last two, severity of pain and functional disability, are both ordinal and in fact they described them with median and interquartile range. And now let's go to the statistical tests, so to our inferential statistics. They assessed the homogeneity of variants with two tests, the Brown, Forsyth and the Levine type tests, and then they used uh, different tests depending 
depending on the kind of variables. So for continuous variables, they use the two factorial ANOVA. Why two factorial? Because they considered two factors, group and time. Then the tacky post hoc analysis was implemented if the results were significant. In fact, we know that ANOVA is a global test and so it doesn't tell where the difference lies. It just tells us if there is a difference. The last two tests for the continuous variables were ANCOVA in order to take into account uh, the covariates and the repeated measures ANOVA in order to explore the differences between the intermediate time points. On the other hand, for the ordinal variables, they implemented the non-parametrical test, so kruskal wallis test, which we know is the equivalent of ANOVA, the Friedman test, and of course the post hoc analysis with the Bonferroni done correction for the same reason as before, so that the kruskal wallis is a global test, so we need to implement further analysis in order to discover where there is the difference that we found before. So, to recap, since we spoke about many outcomes and many tests, ANOVA was used to test the primary outcome, which were the changes in the HIT6 score, and for one of the secondary outcomes, the migraine days per month. On the other hand, kruskal wallis was used for the secondary outcome pain and for the other secondary outcome functional disability. And now here it comes my critical thinking. So let's start with the independent and dependent variables for the primary research question. The independent variable is the intervention, OMT plus medication therapy for the intervention group and the two control groups, so SHAM plus medication therapy and medication therapy only. It is categorical, the authors considered it categorical and I agree with them. Then the dependent variable is the HIT6 score. The authors considered it continuous, but actually I put here a question mark because as I said before, it should be an ordinal variable. So considering this, the test they used was ANOVA followed by the tacky post hoc test. And again, a question mark, because we know that for ordinal variables, we should implement non-parametric tests. But here they considered and so converted the ordinal variable into a continuous one. That's why they decided that they could use ANOVA and probably they implemented the central limit theorem since they had a big sample size and so even if the data were skewed, they were allowed to implement a parametric test as ANOVA. However, here the hamletic doubt is to ANOVA or not to ANOVA. Because as we said, our dependent variable should be ordinal, but they considered it continuous. So I tried to understand, because they didn't say it, but I tried to understand why they decided for ANOVA and not for a non-parametric test. In fact, we know that ANOVA is a parametric test and it has some important assumptions. First of all, the independent variable has to be categorical. Secondly, the dependent variable has to be continuous, normally distributed and with homogeneity of variance. So what does ANOVA enable to do? It enables to compare more than two groups. So in this case, for this study, it would fit because we have three groups. It enables to test other variables, for example, time. And in fact, we have seen they decided to do the two factorial ANOVA. So to consider two factors group and time, and it enables to consider for covariates. As a matter of fact, in this case, they used ANCOVA. The equivalent non-parametric test of ANOVA is kruskal wallis Its assumptions are that uh, the independent variable has to be categorical, while the dependent variable can be continuous, but in this case it has to be non-normally distributed, or it can be ordinal. And then, we still need the homogeneity of variance. Something very important to keep in mind with kruskal wallis is that it allows only one factor, while, as we said, ANOVA enables us to use more factors. So, essentially, this is why I suppose that the authors decided to convert the HIT6 score from ordinal to continuous in order to have in the analysis the factor time and the covariates but they didn't say it in the article, so this is just what I suppose. However, I would like to highlight that converting an ordinal variable into a continuous one is not always accepted by the scientific community. So their decision 
can be questionable. Now we move to the secondary questions, so to the secondary outcomes. The independent variable is always the same, so the intervention, and it continues to be categorical. The first dependent variable is uh, the migraine days per month. It is continuous, and so they use ANOVA and a TACI post hoc test, and I completely agree with them because in this case, the dependent variable was really continuous. Then the other secondary question was the pain assessed with a four-point Likert scale, which is our dependent variable. The independent variable, again, it's still categorical, while the dependent variable is ordinal. In this case, they use the non-parametric test Kruskal-Wallis followed by the Bonferroni post hoc test. And again, we have a similar situation, independent variable categorical, always our groups, and the dependent variable is the functional disability, which is ordinal. And so again, they used the Kruskal Wallis test followed by the Bonferroni post hoc test. With these decisions, I completely agree because they followed all the assumptions. So here's my analysis of uh, the statistical part of this article. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for your attention.